It's ironic that just as Saab's number one competitor, Volvo, choose to launch the S80 as a saloon only, there is no estate, Saab make a return to the load-lugging sector after an absence of 20 years with a 9.5 estate. Mind you, I might still get to have a go in the jet version because Saab chose to launch their new estate at RAF Leeming. Saab say that they've designed the car with an eye to practicality before pure image, but despite that, I think it looks fantastic. They're all new pillars from the rear passenger door back, but the sloping C pillar, well, that's typically Saab. And it also gives the 9.5 quite a sporty, rakish look, which is just as well, because size-wise, the 9.5 estate falls somewhere between the tiny little sporting estates, the one where you have to trade in the retriever for a Jack Russell to fit the dog in the back, and the full-blown load luggers. There are some nice luxury touches too, but those as well are designed with an eye to practicality first. For instance, these roof rails, they're not an adornment, they are real, they will support a load if you find that the boot space isn't enough. And there are some nice touches in the boot space. Open the tailgate, these red lights at the top are a repeater of the tail lights, which means if you're loading at night and you obscure them, people can see you, you're safer. And these white lights are here to illuminate the whole of the load area, make sure you don't trip over anything or step in a puddle. So, on the road, is the big Swede a turnip? Saab make no wild claims about the 9.5 estate being a sports car, but they do point out that they spent a lot of time and a lot of effort making it handle as well as a saloon car on the road, and it's time well spent, because it does. It's very poised on the road, it's actually a very pleasurable drive. There's none of the boomy noise that's usually associated with an estate car either, as a result of the big space at the back. It's very well insulated from that. It's available from launch with two engines, the 2 litre and the 2.3. That's 150 and 170 brake horsepower. Both are Saab's light pressure turbos. Very soon it'll be joined by the 3 litre V6. That's an asymmetric twin turbo and should make it a bit of a stonker. Now, I have said this before, but that's never stopped me from saying anything again, so I shall. Saab, for me, will always be associated with bearded people in goat wool jerseys whose diet means, well, put it this way, you wouldn't want to share a car with them on the school run in the morning. Vegetarians. I'm not being cruel to Saab when I say this, and it's certainly not a reflection on their current range. It's simply that when I was at school, the Saabs I remember from them were all kind of beige, or maybe orange, and blobby in shape. And in updating the childhood memories of the likes of me, Saab do have a bit of a problem in that most of the cars from then are still around today. Building a car that lasts forever can be a bit of a double-edged sword for a manufacturer. It's great to boast about the fact that cars go on for millions of miles, but anybody trying to sell a product whose lifespan is measured in millennia faces a bit of a problem in persuading people to come back and buy another one. That's why British Leyland invented the concept of built-in obsolescence. Sell somebody a car that's good for 40,000 miles, and then sell them another, and another, and another. You'd need carbon dating to pinpoint the original birth date of some of the Saabs still around today. But back to the present. Life is about compromises, ask any American president, and the Saab 95 estate compromises very well. It mixes the better qualities of a sporty estate with the genuine practicality of its more cumbersome competitors. OK, as a drive, it doesn't tear the ground up, but there won't be any skins left on rice puddings, and it does drive much like a saloon. At a shade under £24,000 for the 2-litre engine version and a shade under £27,000 for the 2.3, it competes very well against the likes of Audi, BMW and Volvo, the immediate competitors, on price, as it does on specification. But if you are looking for performance in a, a small, sporty estate, then I'd say take a look at something like Subaru's Legacy, which is more powerful, it's actually cheaper in some instances, and of course it does have the advantage of that permanent four-wheel drive. But if you really want to go Swedish, then the Saab 9.5 estate is definitely worth a look.